This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow Cookie to Range, the podcast of me and today Josie Lewis, our head gardener, because we're talking about the jobs that we're doing at this time of year in September. So starting at the early point, I thought I would kick off with the edibles and then Josie's going to mainly cover the ornamentals, but I will chip in. So in terms of edibles, well, of course, hardy annuals are hardy annuals and so they will take the frost and the wet and so those are the things that we're concentrating on. So in terms of salad leaves, there are loads. All the mustards, salad rocket, mitzuna, I love winter purslane, and then into herbs. Surprisingly, coriander is a hardy annual. People tend to think because it's from a, we use it in sort of curries and Thai cooking that it, it comes, that's the sort of conditions that it would like, but actually it doesn't. It's a hardy annual and it likes the shoulders of the year. So we sow it in September and we sow it in March and we can crop it until Christmas and then it tends to die back a bit. But by sowing it in March, we can then pick it until the summer. So coriander is definitely on my September sowing list, really important. So is flat leaf parsley, giant of Napoli is my favorite. And then there are a few other things that we find surprisingly hardy and really, really useful. Chervil is a lovely, slightly aniseedy tasting herb that I use a lot of. And so we sow that in September. And then apart from sowing, we're still feeding our tomato plants. So we have, funnily enough, I was looking at the tomato plants over the weekend when I was picking them and I thought, what are those funny worms in the top of the, um, <laughs> on top of the compost in the, the tomato pots in the greenhouse? And of course, they're comfrey pellets have slightly sort of expanded with the water. And that's great because they'll gradually break down and release um, a very high potash feed. So keep feeding your tomato plants and harvesting before the cold night setting, because that will blacken the fruit quite quickly. I already sowed in August things like chard and spinach, so I'm planting those out now. And then towards the end of the month, I will start thinking of pruning some of the fruit trees. So the early cropping apples, like discovery, you could start pruning those uh, relatively soon because we'll have picked all the fruit off them. So those are the main things I'm thinking about in the edible garden. So Josie, over to you for the ornamentals. Okay, so in September, you know where you'll find me in the dahlia patch. Yeah. Not only admiring the dahlias, but deadheading. Yeah. Uh, So it's major time for deadheading, but as it as it is has been through August as well. But you've got to keep deadheading either picking for the bars or if they if they've gone over, then deadheading. Um, and that will push more more buds to form and keep going on through October and into November. If you've got them in pots, then you should have been feeding them through August and September. You know, keep keep feeding them now every every week with a liquid seaweed feed or you know whatever you use. Uh, tomato fertilizer is fine because you want that equivalent of fruiting tomatoes, a flowering uh, dahlia. So yeah, just keep deadheading and if if there's been rain remember to pick pick the petals off the off the foliage because you get that uh, mold sets in so quickly on dahlia leaves absolutely so yeah if you're ahead on the deadheading then you shouldn't get petals on the leaves but when we've got so many it's hard to stay ahead and then I'm in the sewing theme. So as well as the edibles um, for the ornamentals, we're sewing hardy annuals like Bilio right now. So things like Ami Magus, Ami Visnaga, Salvia Viridis Blue, the Black Scabius, Scabiosa Atropopura. But I'll put all this in the podcast notes. And don't forget Viola's two pansies. I'm absolutely crazy for brush strokes at the moment, Viola brush strokes. And they just flower. They seem to flower longer than any other pansy or viola that I've grown. And they are absolutely beautiful, both as little container, terracotta container plants 
as edible flowers and as cut flowers. And so I'm going to sow another packet of those in the next week or two. So it's definitely time for now. Yeah, if you can uh, bear to deadhead them, they keep going for so long, don't they? They really, really do. What else? Uh, so you can be planting out your biennials at this time of year. We've sown them a couple of months ago. So it's time time now to get those into the ground before the, the cold or wet weather really sets in. So your wallflowers, uh, honesty, um, sweet rocket, all those things can go into the ground wherever gaps start to appear. Yeah, very good. And just as we, we actually covered in the Q&A, it's time to start planting forced bulbs or forcing bulbs. So things like hyacinths, um, anemones, mini iris, all those things that you want to bring into flower a few weeks earlier than they would in the garden. It's really worth getting going with those around about now, mid-September time. And then what other things are you doing in the garden? So the, the, what we really start on now, early September onwards is taking cuttings of perennial, tender perennials like pelagoniums and we'll also be taking cuttings of salvias. You know, you, you don't know what the winter's going to be like, so this is just taking a precaution. So we'll take cuttings of all our microphylla salvias and you know, the big ones as well, anything that we really want to keep. But pelagoniums is, is the main thing now to increase our stock and you know, if they've been planted outside, then that's how we overwinter them. Because we have so many pelagoniums, we couldn't bring everything inside. Um, so it's a space saving thing as well as to take cuttings of all the varieties that we have. Great. And the final one towards the end of the month, particularly those of you who live a bit further north in a colder spot in the country, it is a time to start thinking about feeding the birds. Now, bird feeders are rather controversial. They're incredibly joyful, lovely things to have, and obviously lovely for certain birds. But there is new evidence that they favour certain birds that are happy to feed from feeders, and uh, they're out competing other rarer birds, which are slightly suffering. But I think within reason, it's still a joyful thing to do. But just remember to clean your bird feeders once a week or whenever you refill them, just put them in really boiling water, give them a good scrub with a bottle brush. And that's the way of uh, preventing any cross transmission of mites or any diseases really from one bird species to another. And that's the thing that has knocked the greenfinch population so, so badly throughout the United Kingdom. And we honestly had lost greenfinches in the garden here. But now they're coming back and it's because we've got lots of seed uh, giving plants and fruit giving plants in the garden, as well as doing a bit of feeding. So lovely. That's a fantastic uh, list of things that we're getting on with. Thank you, Josie, for helping me with those. See you soon. If you've enjoyed this episode of Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, I'd really love it if you reviewed, rated and subscribed on wherever you listen to your podcasts. It'll help new listeners to know that we're here and enable us to keep getting the very best and most interesting guests week after week.